In this video, let's talk about razor syntax, specifically implicit razor expression. We have mentioned that Blazor achieves interactivity with C Sharp. So interactivity is something at the front end, but at the back end, we also need to use C Sharp. Right? That's one of the advantages of using Blazor. So at the back end, we need to use C Sharp. And how do we write C Sharp and reflect that in our web page or components? That's when we need to use Razor Syntax. So let's jump into Visual Studio and see what I mean by using Razor Syntax to uh, reflect C Sharp variables inside web pages. So let's take a look at our server component that we created in one of the previous videos. So let's go in here and as you can see, we only hard coded server is online. So we cannot always hard code something because obviously our application framework should allow us to work with dynamic stuff, right? Which is variables. So let's say we declare a variable and uh, we're going to say status. Let's initialize it with server is offline just to make a difference. And how do we display this C sharp variable value inside HTML? That's when we need to use razor syntax. One of the simplest one to use is the implicit razor expression, which means that you start with the at sign, follows by a variable or a statement. For example, we can say status, and then when the application runs, it's gonna actually take the value from the variable and then replace this razor expression. So you're gonna see server is offline. Let's give it a try. Let's go to our server's page component over here, and we can see that server is offline, right? So this is no longer hard-coded in the HTML part. It comes from our variable. But as I mentioned, implicit reader expression can be either a variable or a statement. So let's say I have a space here, and then uh, I'm going to say at followed by another implicit reader expression that is going to show us the time. So I'm going to say date time and then I'm going to say now. Now I have two implicit reader expression here. First one is using a variable and the second one is kind of using a statement. And as you can see, a reader expression cannot have a space. So once you have a space, then the rest of the things are considered as HTML. So the at is considered as HTML. And then here, when I have another at sign, then everything else, as long as there's no space, this is considered as implicit reader expression. So let me give it a try. So I'm going to go over here and click on restart application. And let's take a look at this and see we have server is offline at the time. And this one is the same. So this is the basics of uh, implicit reader expression. Now let's create a server class to represent a server. So let's go to our server management project here and create a new folder and let's call it models. So we're going to have the classes created under the models folder here. And I'm going to have the server class here. And we're going to add some simple property. For example, we can have server ID is online, which represents whether the server is online or offline. And then the name in which city the server is located. And for now, I want to randomly generate the status, which is whether it's online or offline. Okay. So I'm going to generate it from the constructor here. We're using our random class here to generate a number between zero and one. And then we use that number to generate a Boolean value, whether it's false or true. So now let's come back to our server component here. So here, instead of just use our status variable, let's remove this and let's remove this as well. So here we are going to have our server class here. This requires our namespace. And as I mentioned before, I'm going to centralize that namespace inside the underscore imports component here. So I'm going to say server management dot models so that later when I add more classes into the models namespace, I don't have to import namespace every single time. As you can see that immediately that fixed our problem here. I'm going to just initialize it right here. And then over here, I'm going to give it a name server one and the city is Toronto. And here 
I'm going to use razor expression here and say at server dot name and I'm going to use a space here. So is in and then I'm use another implicit razor expression here. I'm going to say server dot city. All right. So let's give it a try. Go over here and restart our application. And let's come over here. It says server one is in Toronto. This is all I want to show you in this video. You just need to remember that to use implicit razor expression, you just need to start with at sign. Just remember not to include a space. If you include the space, then this, the things that after the space is not considered as part of the razor expression anymore It's considered as part of the HTML. And then you can add another razor expression afterwards. Another thing I want to make it clear is that you don't have to use crazy expression inside a paragraph. You can use it in a div, in a label, in a span, in any HTML element. You can even use it in an attribute of an HTML element. For example, I'm going to say data dash name equals server dot name. Right, so this is also valid. So let's give it a try. And now you see the same thing, but let's examine the HTML here. And you can see that we have a div and I have a, an attribute and it has server one inside it. So that's what I want to show you, right? You can use your razor expression everywhere inside HTML, including inside a elements attribute. Okay. So that's the end of this video. If you have any questions, please let me know. If not, I will see you in the next one.